Ladies and gentlemen, family and friends, scholars and dignitaries, welcome to another episode. Welcome to my world. Hello, friends. So there is no doubt that perhaps the greatest industry we need is the medical industry, and that includes a wide variety of clinical practices from private physician groups to hospitals, residential care organizations, and specialty services such as radiology, OBGYN, dialysis, and disease-specific treatment programs and services. In fact, as according to the University of Michigan Medical School, there are roughly 10,000 diseases afflicting humans throughout the world. And while most people think that it may be simple, such as the flu or perhaps even cancer, the truth is that most of these diseases are considered rare or orphan diseases. And as such, the wide array of medical, diagnostic, and primary, secondary, and tertiary medical services is far greater than perhaps for any other industry out there. But for one minute, put the quantity and the quality of healthcare aside, and let's look at another issue, the costs. In dollar terms, for just the United States, medical costs approximate $4 trillion per year, and that's about 20% of the nation's gross domestic product. We have had a very real problem with the cost of health insurance over the years, and we've had a second problem. Health insurance, for those who had it, had a particular manner of not covering some very necessary services, and even if they did cover them, the coverage demanded either a high deductible before they would pay or high co-pays or both. And that's in addition to the average $21,000 insurance cost for a family of four. So for a family that had a chronic illness that needed continued treatment, even with family coverage, it wouldn't be abnormal to see them building higher and higher unpaid medical bills, even to the point of going bankrupt. And of course, there were other complications to these costs as well. Doctors order excessive tests to be sure of the issues they diagnose or even to cover themselves for malpractice lawsuits. Lawyers bring frivolous lawsuits against health providers, driving up their malpractice insurance costs beyond reasonable limits, a cost that's passed on to patients. Prescription drug costs aren't regulated and are among the highest products of inflation. And of course, hospitals do not advertise their rates or control them. Thus, continue to open new and more expensive services and practices while inflating their prices and passing the costs on to the consumers. It's not unusual for a hospital to pay two or three cents for an aspirin to charge $25 for that same aspirin. So in effect, the healthcare industry, even as a highly regulated industry, certainly is one of the most costly with many of those costs unwarranted and out of control. In fact, just take COVID. The average cost for a person hospitalized with COVID is $42,200. And one patient who survived, again, thanks to the hospital, received a bill for over $1.1 million. And the bill he received, which detailed his medical treatment and charges, was 181 pages long. So now, more and more, even with appropriate health insurance coverage, people are not able to pay these mounting bills. So now, even with all this funding from the federal and state governments, including monies for an indigent care fund, hospitals have now decided to place liens on patients' homes to be sure to collect the money that they are owed. Yes, after working for 40 years, raising a family and finally paying off your house, now a hospital comes along and places a lien on your home. In New York State, dozens of hospitals throughout the state imposed a total of 4,880 liens on the homes of their patients with outstanding medical bills, according to a recent report. These hospitals are using a controversial debt collection practice, mostly against low-income patients. Now, when confronted by the media and patient advocacy groups, two of these hospitals did announce that they're going to stop this practice. And interestingly, these hospitals operate as nonprofit organizations, and as required by state law and regulation, their ability to function as tax-exempt organizations requires them to provide various financial aid and charity care. 
Now, I will say that the vast majority of the 189 hospitals in the state did not use this aggressive debt collection effort, but many of the other hospitals that sued used extreme collection activities that you might expect from vulture banks, but certainly this is not what you would expect charities to do. And the hospitals that did file those liens against their patients' homes already received a total of $442 million from that indigent care fund. And that's far more than what these 5,000 patients owe these hospitals. Meanwhile, many other states prohibit exactly this type of predatory behavior. To me, these hospitals are double dipping. And even if they aren't, they should be exercising better self-restraint. Let me know what you think. Hey, be safe, be well, and may God bless.